everyone. Welcome to DevOps Dialogues. I'm Daniel Newman, your host today, CEO, founder of the Futurum Group. Excited to be here with your future host, Paul Nasawadi. Today, we are introducing the show. We call this episode zero, setting the tone on the whole space, app dev, DevOps, the influence that AI and so many other technological trends are having on industries and enterprises. Paul Nasawadi, Host to be, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Great, Daniel. Thank you. Excellent to be here. Really excited to be here. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to have you here. I'm really excited for the setup of this show. It's fun for me to come in as someone that's done a, a, a couple of different podcasts, shows, videos, and uh, get to play host to set up this show. Um, but I've spent time with you since you joined the Future Group over the last uh, few months and really just gotten to know and you are a wealth of knowledge in this space. And I know this show isn't going to be just about your wealth of knowledge. It's going to be, uh, we're going to be bringing technology leaders on. We're going to be bringing on uh, end customers, partners, maybe even some other analysts from time to time. Um, and I just want everyone to kind of hear what's going on in this space. But you know what? Before we even do that, um, you know, you have a really exciting, interesting background. And so as the host of episode one and then forever, which I'm hoping we'll do this, you know, for at least a few more years. Give everyone a little bit of the intro. Tell them a little bit about Paul Nasawadi and the work you've done and how you got into this modernization DevOps app dev space. Absolutely, Daniel. You know, really, like I said, really excited to be here. It's an exciting time in this space, right? Because when we look at DevOps, it is growing. And, and, you know, I spent about three years building a practice around DevOps and, and, and focused on application modernization, talking about day zero, day one, day two, build, release, and operations, and what that all means to modernization practices and such. It's just really an exciting time where organizations are taking it from past, present, and future and really taking that, that step forward. So, you know, a little bit about my background. 25 plus years as a practitioner and across various technology spaces that I've been in, uh, both large and small companies. So I worked in, in the big, big, uh, big vendor spaces. I was in M and A for a while, and I focused in on the technology stacks, um, such as virtualization and data protection and storage and and, and application development. And I and I wrote a, a book on application development, so I was really excited about that. So taking that space here into the... Wait, 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 wait. You did what? I wrote a book. Is that what you... What's the title of your book? You can never miss a chance on a podcast to tell people about a book. Oh, I wrote a book. It's a, it's actually a for dummies book. It's a rapid applications development for dummies. So is it one of those yellow the, books? The focus on the space that we're talking about here. Is it one of those yellow books? The ones that's for it's dummies? Yellow yellow ones? So you have your yes. name on a for dummies book. So you're like, basically, I'm a smart guy for dummies. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's I might have written a book or, or 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 seven. But the point is is that I can tell you that is no small feat. So very, yeah. very cool. Congratulations on uh on that and, and on all the background and all the things that you've done. And and you've been an analyst too. Um, you know, sometime maybe episode, you know, because you gotta let people get to know you can't give them everything right away, but over the course of maybe several hundred episodes, they can start to get to know a little bit about you, Paul, and uh, why you ended up giving up real work to become an analyst. Uh, that's that's a pervasive joke of myself and uh, my dear friend, Patrick Moorhead, when we talk about back in the day when we had a real job. Um, this is hard work, people. This is not easy. Um, but having said that, sometimes not having to actually do the DevOps or do the app development, just opining about it can be quite fun and rewarding and riskless. <laughs> so, no, let's start with a little bit about the market trend. I've been an analyst now. We've started, the firm's almost eight years old. Um, I've been at this quite a while. And the, the word DevOps and app dev and this space, it's just exploded in the last couple of years. It was a topic, I think it was more nascent or periphery. It certainly didn't have nearly as many analysts focused on it. Um, there weren't as many companies in it. Talk a little bit about the market trends that have sparked the interest in making you one of the hottest practices here at the Future Group. Yeah, absolutely, Daniel. You know, when we look at the trends in, in DevOps and we look at the trends in modern, I would say modernization in general, right? We look at application modernization and what's happening. It, 
organizations are moving very, very rapidly, right? And, and actually, they're doing two to three times more now with a fraction of the resources that they had just a few years ago. So the amount of applications that are being built uh, in, the, in the cloud, on-prem, at the edge locations, and everything that touches the, the environment is really taken off. So when we see trends for these organizations, we're seeing things like skill gap issues, we're seeing tech debt, we're seeing multi-cloud adoption, we're seeing modernization overall is a, is a challenge. But when we look at it, it's not just about the business logic, it also goes all the way down to the, inf the infrastructure stack as well. So there's a lot happening here and, and organizations are looking at it holistically and trying to understand what do they do? Yeah, I mean, the overall trend line, you could start with the major macros like AI, uh, but then you can also look at multi-cloud. You can look at remote and distributed work and the changes in workspace. You can talk about SaaS versus kind of uh, modernization of, of old and legacy apps. And, and let's be very clear, Paul, companies do not, unless you were started in the last two or three years, there are very few companies that were born from the bottom you know, days, first days on all pure SaaS and pure cloud. There's tons of legacy and apps and modernization. And even if you maybe start here now, you, you end up acquiring a company, you end up getting connected in through, you know, through ETL or something to a client that you can have. And all of a sudden you find yourself using legacy apps. So there is no way around this. It's only about finding the best app to being able to, of course, modernize where modernization makes sense optimize where optimization makes sense. This creates a lot of, of complexity. So, you know, in your world, like kind of what's top of mind and how, you know, for, for the DevOps space and more importantly, like you work with a lot of customers and, and, and um, you know, you've been a great value to so many that I've spoken to. What are you talking to these folks about when it comes to the ways that a practice like yours can help these companies? Absolutely. And you're spot on. There's a number of pieces that you that you touched on that you really need to look look at and unpack, right? When you look at that, I don't like to use the L word, the legacy word, because a lot of a lot of organizations feel like it's not legacy to them. That's still kind of I would say the heritage environments that they they kind of are looking to refactor. The reality of it is is everyone has this cloud craze, right? They want to move to the cloud. They want to move to a, a better, faster way of doing things. But the reality is most organizations don't know that. They don't need to refactor everything. Maybe they may take a, a, a siloed or, or monolithic application and encapsulate it into a VM and make it a cloud-ready VM, for example, and then use that as a system of record that, that, that organizations can access, right? But it's still in the cloud. The way to modernize a lot of organizations are moving to the present state, the way I would define present state is use a containerized or microservices architecture, maybe build a React application or something in the front end that accesses that system of record. So that stays intact. But really, it's about that to being dynamic and agile and to be able to be fluid within the organization. In fact, what I, I was just on a call the other day and I was talking about the uh, refactoring versus moving to the cloud and, and building in the cloud. And what we found in, in some of our research is that we found that 11% of organizations are using the cloud to rebuild, to basically build, refactor their applications. But yet... We asked the same question two years from now, and they're looking at repatriating back on-prem. So my, my argument here is they're moving to the cloud, redoing their, their uh, on-prem infrastructure to be cloud-like, and then repatriating back. So they're really using that cloud architecture to build yeah. an environment. So that's a big trend right now that we're seeing. We also see that multi-cloud, distributed cloud environments, 96% uh, of organizations are using two or more. 65% are using four or more clouds. And that's for production application, not just SaaS applications. And then application, application portability is also critical to 20% of respondents said that it's critical for organizations to use application portability. So when you're looking at the core to edge to cloud environments, those data points are really important to understand, maybe just from what the market landscape is doing. Right. Yep. And then and then your own organization will determine whether it meets your needs as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And that's why DevOps leaders, uh, CIOs, CTOs, and of course, uh, here at Futurum, we're so focused on offering value and thinking about the challenges and working closely, whether that's through, uh, you know, market data intelligence, uh, case studies and, and, and survey development, or even just advising based upon kind of the overall 
conversations that you're having with their peers. And that's always super important as people get a good insight uh, from their peer group. And, 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 and by the way, Paul, I mean, you know, beyond just you working your tail off around the clock, going client to client, company to company and talking uh, about the trends that we just mentioned, you know, we're also really trying to build a discipline across the organization. I mean, some of the things I know you're working on is building DevOps uh, market intelligence and having a, a broader mm-hmm. data set, which we, we started with our AI data that the future intelligence offers. Um, you're also building out a series of sort of influence slash advisory events that are going to get customers and, and analysts closer together. I believe you and uh, our tech field day team are working on uh, DevOps field days. Talk a little bit about kind of some of the things that you're envisioning doing in your practice beyond sort of just traditional advisory, um, you know, so that everyone out there can kind of learn a little more about those, your vision of, of how we're going to collaborate. Absolutely, Daniel. And, you know, when I, when I think about the practice, I think about it in, in the context of, you know, application development and modernization in three sub-segments. There's that build, release, and operations, day zero, day one, day two. And I'm really excited to be working with the intelligence team to be doing research studies for each one of those pillars as well. So I'll have a, an observability uh, research study that's gets being fielded pretty soon. And we'll have research around testing. We'll have research around development, DevOps, and platform engineering. So really excited about that. And that uh, research is really fresh and new. And of course, we'll be able to cross-tab that and reference that against the the AI research that we already have in the portal. So that's really exciting there. The other factors, you mentioned Tech Field Day. Love Tech Field Day. Tech Field Day is a a kind of a birds of a feather environment where we can get together and, and talk about really some cool stuff about what's happening in the space. You know, I'm excited that we're going to have Tech Field Day, DevOps Tech Field Day in May. That's where we're kicking that one off. We're looking at an observability Tech Field Day, and that's really going to be exciting as well. So there's a lot happening there. But across the board, I, I view myself and my practice as a way to help um, organizations, their marketing departments, their, their um, product departments, to help them through the funnel, right? We're looking at things like economic and technical validations. We're looking at top of funnel assets, anything around the content uh, that has to do with webinars or or web uh, webcasts or podcasts like this one, or uh, assets, written assets, papers and such, all of that stuff to help your, your demand gen uh, needs and such. But really just looking to be a, a trusted advisor for those organizations that are trying to understand what are they trying to do? This is a big challenge for many CIOs, modernization. And there's yeah. so many directions you can go and those hundred roads may not necessarily get you to the same destination. You have to pick the right one to get you where you need to go. Yeah, I love that you reiterated a couple of things too, like economic validation, something that we've been very focused on is helping customers uh, and clients and technology vendors that we work with able to align closely with uh, their customers, getting to their customers and being able to get to their peers and say, hey, I'm a financial services company and I did this, this was my strategy, this was the technology we chose and this is how much value we were able to discern from that investment. It's really important. Like, People, companies, of course, want to do proof of concepts. Everyone wants to sell that, but it's it's always a faster way to get from where you are to a proof of concept. When the company says, "Look, three of the peer companies in my industry chose this technology, and we're able to realize its value." And, and you know, I know you have a, a really good uh, you know pedigree for being able to develop that kind of insight. And so that's something I'm really looking forward to seeing how you build out in this practice. Uh, yeah, and, and Daniel, you know, with regards to validations around the space, when it comes to DevOps specifically. It really does come down to build versus buy. A lot of the uh, DevOps teams want to flex their technical muscle. They want to understand that they, they, they can do the job. But CIOs need to look at it and go, well, is it worth my team's time to build this platform or should I buy a platform? And that's when you start looking at the options in the market. Because honestly, DevOps teams, those organizations are in the business to do what they do. Or if they're in banking or or automotive or manufacturing, that's what they do. They're not in the business to build DevOps platforms. And, you know, without having a clear understanding of that return on the investment of what you should build versus buy, it's pretty easy to go, well, we'll just give it to the team over here to build it. And they realize how quickly that adds up in spend. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, let's kind of begin with the end in mind. One of my favorite old Stephen Covey lines, but is, you know, 
we're obviously here at Future on making a big investment. We found, you know, when we sat down and chatted to be very like-minded, you and I and leadership here at Future and you as an analyst in terms of the opportunity. So why is it so important for companies and why is it so important for us to be investing in this space? Yeah, that's a great question because I think as organizations look at um, their modernization efforts, it's it's no longer just about what server to replace or what drive to replace or which piece of hardware to replace. It comes down to what is the overall solution and is it necessary to build it internally or should we look at a different location? We have, organizations are looking at other factors, external factors such as sustainability and governance and regulations. And what, what do you do in the cloud? Do you, do you have data sovereignty issues? All of these things have, to have are complexities that just a few years ago were not a challenge. Right. So it's like, oh, it was, it was the treadmill exercise. I mean, years ago, I worked as a, a big storage company and it was about going in and just giving the next hard drive, giving the next storage. And, and it was just a treadmill. But now it's not like that at all. It's like, do we actually stand up a data center or do we shut that down because it's costing too much money from other factors? So it's important to really evaluate the entire solution from a FinOps perspective. From a, from a sustainability perspective, from a tech stack perspective. And then also, I mentioned it earlier, your skill gap. Are you working it with your own team? Can you hire people? Or do you work with service delivery partners to get the job done? There's a lot of different ways to get, get there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, Paul, listen, I got to ask you one final really quick question. Are you ready to take the reins as host of DevOps Dialogues? Daniel, I can't wait to take the reins. I have a, a whole log of people lined up, literally, that are ready to do this. I can't wait. To, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, I have CEOs from these companies, both emerging companies as well as established companies. I have uh, partners and vendors. I have end users as well as other analysts. I'm, I'm really thrilled and excited to be interviewing them and having this, this, uh, this series go and grow. And always looking for feedback. So anybody to the audience... Please provide that feedback, engage with me. I'd love to hear a topic that you're interested in and we'll bring it to the next episode. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, I think you're ready. All I ask is at some point in the first 100 episodes, just let me come back on so I can be part of this exciting growth. I am an absolute believer in this space. The work you are doing, the work we are doing is going to help the most important companies in the world do some of the hardest work there is in technology and that's bringing their technology up to where it needs to be without leaving all that investment, all that work that's been done behind. It's finding that balance. I trust you to take that, take the charge there, Paul. And for everyone out there, hit that subscribe button and join us. Stay with us. The next conversations, I promise, are going to be better. You're going to have a host that knows the most about this topic and he's going to be bringing on great guests in this space. But for this episode, for this first DevOps Dialogue, I appreciate the guest hosting opportunity. I'm going to sign off right now. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Thank you all.